So, Rory, can you tell us why you started to do lecture flipping? What was it that you were trying to address in your teaching? Well, the, the main impetus that drove me to do this was uh, an occasion about five years ago when I found myself teaching three separate statistics classes, very similar, at a very similar level, and I was basically repeating the same lecture three times a week. And it was basically just very boring for me, it got boring for them. And I thought to myself, what is the point of simply saying the same thing over and over again three times? The other, the other thing, the other driver, by the way, that um, led me to look into the possibility of this sort of technology was that when I teach statistics, statistics is a very practical uh, a very practical set of abilities. We use a computer program called SPSS mainly and a lot of the the skills that people have to know in statistics is how to use this or whatever your preferred program happens to be. And this involves basically doing it. You can't just talk about it. You have to get you have to do it yourself. You're going to learn. Uh, in most cases what we do is we have a tutor computer which they can uh, observe. We have, we have a computer room. Uh, they can, uh, the students can observe what I'm doing on the computer. They then switch some kind of junction box and they then repeat themselves. Uh, well that's all very well um, up to a point, but uh, the problem is they only get one demonstration. And I noticed a lot of the students were frantically taking notes while I was doing the demonstrating in some kind of shorthand trying to interpret the movements of the cursor across the screen. So I thought, it, wouldn't it be a lot more sensible if I could simply make a recording of this, a screencast recording, in fact, of the actions I was carrying out with a voiceover. I discovered that on YouTube there were a number of demonstrations, I mean literally probably hundreds, thousands of demonstrations. And I found them very effective as a teaching tool, so I thought I would do the same myself. And students could then go back home and practice doing the, uh, working the computer program, flipping backwards and forwards to my demonstration and then doing it for themselves. And I thought this would just be um, a much more efficient way of communicating this. Perhaps this would be more meaningful. I'll just show you how, how this works on the screen. Basically, it's a series of PowerPoint slides, but interweaved with this are SPSS demonstrations. There are also links to websites, links to Word documents, which I can, I can explain. You can, you can mix and match with this program very easily, and you can also edit, edit things in and edit them out. So this basically gave everything they needed to know for a basic lecture. So then the question is, what do you do with the, with the time left over? Given that there is a lot of detail to get through, before I started this technique, I found that I was constantly rushing to get through the material that I had to deliver in, and it was a two hour class, so there was, you can imagine there was a lot of detail and even two hours was very often not enough. So with this, I can then, I could then deliver the detail, the fact, factual content very much in advance, and I could use the class time to, I really made the lectures in much more of something like a seminar. And should the, if you like, if you like to divide rather simplistically understanding learning statistics into deep and shallow understanding, I, I think one has to start with the shallow learning. But the factual, factual side of the learning process can just as easily be delivered through this sort of medium, as uh, through me standing up and talking. There was a, uh, a marked increase in performance uh, for the first, for the last two years when I've been using full-time flipping. I mean, if you want evidence, that is objective evidence. Feedback from students has been generally positive as well. I think this sort of method is very good if you have a subject, first of all, where there's a lot of detail to be conveyed. Certainly if there's a lot of practical skills, like with the, with the SPSS, and also if essentially the 
subject matter doesn't change very much from year to year. It did take a great deal of investment on my part, not a huge amount, but a significant amount of time and effort to get these lectures screencast in the first place. That investment I'm now going to be drawing on from year to year. I can, uh, on the VLE, I can actually tell how many people and who is, is accessing material in advance. And for some, some courses and some weeks it's been disappointingly small. I have had to I have had to read the Riot Act once or twice and make it very clear to students that their share in this process, it's a two-way street and that they have to make the effort as well. I think in coming years I may well try to encourage them a little more actively by having quizzes or tests at the beginning of each lecture, going through the basic facts of the lecture and just uh, finding, making sure that people have a certain basic level of, of knowledge. I think, provided they're doing the homework side of it, I think it works very well. So I would definitely, with those qualifications that I mentioned, it very much horse, horses for courses, it very much depends on the subject matter that you're trying to put across, but I think for some people it's certainly an option you should be considering.